Recording in progress. Good evening and welcome to the Federal City Council meeting for November 16th of 2021. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, before we get started with the uh, usual business of our uh, agenda, uh, we've got some, well, actually, uh, before we get started, um, uh, before I uh, do this, um, Council President Honda, do you have a motion? I move to, <clears throat> I move to amend the agenda to add acceptance of grant funds for SB 5476 Therapeutic Court Grant Program to Council Business as Item 7D. Second. Second. All right. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any, any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Passes unanimously. Um, Council Member Moore, did you have another motion? Yes. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move to amend the agenda to add an item to the business agenda to discuss directing staff to create a zoning ordinance allowing marijuana stores in the city. Okay, there's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. O opposed? Nay. Okay. Uh, Stephanie? Council President Honda? Nay. Council Member Asafa Dawson? Aye. Council Member Baruso? Aye. Council Member Tran? Nay. Council Member Kraft? Aye. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Kochmar? Nay. Um, motion carries 4 3. All right. That's just uh, for a discussion item. And uh, what item will that be on the uh, agenda, Stephanie? I'm 7 sorry. 7E, I believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, now uh, let's move to the certificates of uh, uh, appreciation, uh, recognition of Councilmember Baruso and Councilmember Kraft. You know, during uh, most of the time um, uh, that uh, um, council, member, uh, council members Baruso and Kraft have been uh, members of the city council, their participation uh, from the dais has been uh, very limited because of COVID and COVID restrictions. Um, and so, uh, but it's altogether fitting that we're able to uh, uh, be here for their last, uh, uh, their last council meeting. Now, normally, um, Council members would serve through uh, the rest of the year, but because the council members, uh, council members Bruso and council member Kraft were appointed upon certification, uh, the, uh, uh, the new council members will be sworn in. So this will be the last council meeting uh, as council members uh, for council member Baruso and council member Kraft. So I just wanna say thank you so much for your service. I've got some uh, certificates here. We'll have some folks talk. And we do actually anticipate a, about a 10 minute uh, break uh, um, back in the uh, uh, Jerry Lynn, our ever dutiful um, uh, aide to the council, uh, has some uh, refreshments uh, for um, uh, for the public, um, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Actually, I'll just talk about it now. So we've got um, hopefully we've got enough for everybody, but because we've got the mask uh, requirement here, um, they're they're sealed. So if you could uh, take those with you um, and and eat them home. Um, my, uh, and that's a good thing because if I just sat up here, I'd be tempted to eat them. I get to bring them home to my son, uh, who will be sure to eat them. Um, uh, and so I'm glad they're wrapped up, uh, for me. So, um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, uh, read the certificates. And, you know, I, I just want to say that, you know, the, 
uh, people signing up and uh, either running or be appointed to a council member, it, these are, are jobs in which they're true public service. And so we so much appreciate people that have stepped up to run, whether successfully or unsuccessfully, people that have served and, um, and then transitions occur. Um, obviously, we just finished a, a cycle of elections, and those elections are uh, near certification. But the service to our community is certainly appreciated. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication. And uh, we, uh, you know, it's, uh, these are interesting times for the city of Federal Way, and there's a lot. We're really at a city at a crossroads, and our council members do so much service and so much um, uh, work on behalf of the community. So. Uh, first, a uh, certificate of recognition uh, presented to Councilmember Gregory Baruso in appreciation of your service and dedicated dedication to the citizens of Federal Way, Washington, in your capacity as a council member, signed this 16th day of November 2021, uh, the mayor and all city council members. And uh, let me hand this to you right now. Once we do the certificates and people talk, I, I would suggest, uh, Jerry Lynn, maybe a group picture where we can kind of come down. Maybe we'll be a little bit at arm's length and we'll do a kind of a, a good group picture. And then after we do the group picture, everybody, then we'll break for the 10 minute um, recess. If I could stop talking. Okay, uh, good luck with that. All right, certificate of recognition presented to Council Member Leandra Kraft. In appreciation of your service and dedication to the citizens of Federal Way, Washington, in your capacity as a city council member. Signed the 16th day of November, 2021. Thank you. So let's start with, uh, actually, ladies first. Uh, let's start with uh, uh, Council Member Kraft, and then we'll go to uh, Council Member Barusa. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody um, for having conversations with me, reaching out to me since I've been on city council. Thank you to my fellow council members, to the mayor for um, basically helping me get through being on council during this difficult time. It's been truly an honor serving the city of Federal Way. I also, the last thing I just wanna say is that I wish all of the new council members the utmost luck and I respect you all for running and I think that um, you know we can only hope for the best in the future, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to thank, really, I want to, first of all, I want to thank everyone on the council, my colleagues. Um, I spent 12 years on the diversity commission, year and a half here on the council, and so I've done a lot of work. 13 and a half years in the city is a lot of time, but I'm not done. Um, but just to let everyone know, I want to thank all the staff, because I know that during COVID-19 time, it was very, very tough uh, to have us on Zoom, to get us together, gets to do a lot of things and sometimes the, the meetings weren't seamless right and they went kind of sideways but that's technology for you where's tim at but uh but I, again you know i want to thank everyone for for the opportunity i want to thank the mayor for the opportunity again for the council it is if you haven't served in public before it is very 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 rewarding when things happen and things don't happen and so but you have to take the good with the bad. You have to take the yin and the yang. You have to take the whatever else is left. You fight the battles and you win some, you lose some. Um, but I want to thank the, the public for entrusting uh, this position uh, to me. And I wish those who have would be taking the seats, it's like Leandra says, my colleague, good luck. If you need anything, you know, um, there is, there's we're always here too you know just because we're up here and we're not going to be up here doesn't mean you can't call doesn't mean that we don't know other things that need to have to happen you know so trust your instincts trust the other folks work collaboratively with everyone here uh for the best of the federal way for the rest of the city because that's all we're looking for that's all we all looking for when we're up here at, at certain times but i want to thank my family Uh, 13 years of uh, work for the city and Jerry Land, thank you for all of you done um, because when I was on the diversity commission she was kind of like my cog here the wheel you know she kept us going and so um, but I thank everyone for this opportunity and so 
I think I should talk less, I guess. But. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Councilmember Sepa Dawson. It's hard to hand out. Okay, great. Um, just want to say thank you to both of you for doing the work that you've been doing for the for your input for your support and I also want to say thank you for actually being so intentional about your expertise and bringing that to this table um, that has been very helpful I really appreciate it enjoyed working with you and I'm unfortunately it wasn't we weren't here on the dais so everything was over the phone and zoom but I still enjoyed working with you guys and thank you for your time and Please don't vanish. <laughs> um, stay engaged, stay connected, and uh, um, like you guys said, I also want to say welcome to the new incoming council members, and I look forward to working with you guys as well. So thank you for running, and uh, um, good luck. Um, I think we're going to have a great time together. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, council President Honda. Oh, thank you. You always know. You must see my. I I know. I'm watching. Hand moving there. Um, Thank you very much for applying for an open seat because I think that's harder than an, running an election because you have to um, make like five people happy or six people and, um, and it's hard to do that and I, I really give you a lot of credit for doing that and for, for running an election. Um, this was a really difficult election season. And I think you guys did really well. You did, you ran great um, campaigns. I'll miss you here, up here. I, um, well, I'll miss you up here. Heck, we've only been up here twice. This is our second time um, since COVID. And I have to say that the last, what, 19, 20 months, I don't know how long we've been off, um, have been really difficult. And you've been part of that. Not that you were difficult, it's just <laughs> that, you, you know, it was difficult as a council to connect at times because we didn't have the, the ability to be in person. And um, being on a computer screen, you know, just wasn't the, the very best. So. And I personally want to thank you both for answering your emails and your telephones. Thank you so much. You responded. I, that was just, that's really special. So thank you very much. And good luck in the future. Thank Council you. Member Tran and then Council Member Coach Mark. Council Member Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll make it quick. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to both um, for really stepping up and, and you know, um, going to this position to serve the people of Virtual Way. You guys, um, it's been an honor for me working alongside with both of you, you know, taking a job that pay, you know, less than a minimum wage and, uh, you know, you make uh, the best of it. Um, so thank you very much. And um, please stick around. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Coachmore. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, and so thank you, Council Member Kraft and Council Member Baruso. You will always be able to say that you were a council member in one of the finest cities in Washington State. And you know, when you're working in a body of seven plus one, you have to work collaboratively. And I wanna thank you for always being very decent people. You're very decent. You're always very uh, easy to talk to both of you. So I wanna thank you for that and thank you. And I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Councilor Moore, Moore. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I've been here for eight years and I think one of the most difficult parts in this job is uh, seen your colleagues go um, and seen some enter and um, I want you both to know how much I've loved working with you guys I think what makes a policy um, what makes a um, I think the best thing about you both is the fact that you always picked up your phones and you were ready to talk about anything. We created that space where everything was on the table and we can dissect it, we can take it apart, and we can create a plan. Um, Greg, you and I have known each other for a long time. Councilmember Brusso, we've known each other for a very, very long time. And um, just having those daily uh, conversations with you 
has just been incredibly fulfilling. Uh, and it just constantly reminds me of why we're up here, why we do what we do. And it's for the people. It's for advocating for working families. It's advocating for the underserved populations. Um, and I just have appreciated every bit of conversations that we have, we've had. Um, and quite frankly, as a commissioner, uh, you've done a lot uh, for 12 years. And six of those years being the chair of a diversity commission. You've gone, we have seen turbulent times in that diversity commission, and you were there to, to guide it. And, and so I think Councilor Safa Dawson is absolutely correct. We have been a stronger council because of the expertise you brought to the council, especially at this very moment during COVID. Uh, and so uh, I just want to just show nothing but gratitude, appreciation, and I know that the conversations will continue. Uh, and, uh, and I just want to say thank you for just being there for federal A. That's what it is. Councilor Le uh, Leander Craft, you are amazing. You are a rock star. Um, again, I mean, the expertise that you brought to the table has been completely invaluable, especially around the legal systems. Uh, and just the fact that um, I didn't know who you were when you first came. And here we are today. And the fact that you and I have talked consistently and dissected and worked through policies and all of our conversation and just being a sounding board, I have, you have no idea how much I've appreciated that. Tremendously. And I think it's a really cool thing that your husband and your daughter is out here to see you up here. And I hope that your daughter gets to see, continue to see leaders like you on this council. I think it's really important. And, and to see strong women uh, in leadership spots. I think that is so important. And I can go on and on and on, but I'm not going to. But I, that's rude. That's so rude. So uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your commitment to the, our community. I really appreciate it. Okay, it's picture time. Let's go ahead and you guys, I'm going to set the uh, set the alarm for 12 minutes. So take a couple minutes, take the picture, and then we'll have, we will recess for about 10 minutes for a brief reception. Uh, if you haven't got some of those cookies, make sure you get them, um, and then uh, uh, we'll reconvene. All right, let's go.
and public hearing for Sarah's item. Okay. So she'll be up twice. Just so you remember that, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's reconvene. Please. Okay, just need Lydia. Lydia. We'll wait. Uh, you guys, when we reconvene and uh, call public comment, Bob Drake is going first. This is his birthday tonight, so uh, <laughs> for being for sharing his birthday with us, he gets to go first, right? Or do we have a? Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll call the meeting back to order. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, all right. Mayor's emerging issues and report. First, we've got our COVID-19 report. Ray Gross, our emergency manager. Ray. Good evening, Mayor, Council President, Council Members. Uh, I'm here to give you a brief update on the COVID situation. So King County remains in a state of high transmission. It's meeting currently three out of the five key indicators. Uh, vaccinations for King County residents 12 years old or older, fully vaccinated is 83.8%. Uh, King County is probably one of the top five counties that are vaccinated in the country. Uh, federal Way residents 12 years old and older, fully vaccinated is 73.2%. Some Federal Way COVID numbers. Uh, in the last seven days, new cases have decreased by 4%. Hospitalizations in the past seven days have been five with three deaths related to COVID in the past 14 days. A couple other items that are in the news. Uh, Pfizer is applying for emergency use authorization for a COVID treatment pill, as well as they're trying to amend the uh, emergency use authorization to their booster shot, allowing all adults to receive a booster if their medical practitioners advise so. Uh, with that, Mayor, that ends my report. Very good. Thank you, Ray. You're very welcome. All right. And thank you so much for your dedicated service. Yes, sir. All right. Town Square Park tree lighting on December 4th at 4 p.m. Uh, John, you want to give us the highlights? Sure. We look forward to seeing everybody. It starts at 4 o'clock. Mr. and Mrs. Claus will be making their uh, appearance uh, via a fire truck, a vintage fire truck, we understand. It's going to be a great event, as it always is. Uh, the large uh, holiday tree will be lit uh, as soon as it gets dark, right around 5 o'clock. We have a band that will be playing all the uh, holiday favorites, and we look forward to seeing everybody there. All right. We're going to go old school analog on the uh, on the flip of the switch. Is that right, John? No, I wanted to talk to you about some new technology we want to try out, sir. No, yes, absolutely old school. So when we flip the switch, it'll come on, hopefully. <laughs> we appreciate all the good vibes, people. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's not do a clapper, though. Uh, all right. All right, thank you very much. I look forward to it. Hope you guys can make it. Um, and it's a, it's a great event. All right, um, uh, recent community events. We had a community and school fundraising breakfast on, um, I gotta use my glasses, sorry you guys. Uh, community and schools breakfast on 11.5 that was held uh, via Zoom. And uh, let's see here. Oh, reminder everybody that we, um, uh, in December we only have one council meeting we don't have just as normal as a, uh, by council rule we do not have a second meeting in December so our one and only full city council meeting is our next meeting um, yeah and that's December 7th okay uh, now on to council committee reports uh, parks recreation human services public safety council member coach Mar. thank you very much mayor Farrow we just had our meeting last night for the uh, parks public safety recreation human services meeting we talked about uh, replacing the police gates, which apparently need to be replaced. An easement for Puget Sound Energy. We talked about the SCORE jail contract, uh, increasing the beds. 
we, we talked about purchasing, this is pretty interesting, you may want to know, we're purchasing a couple of new electric motorcycles uh, that we will be using, the police will be using on our trails, like the BPA trail. So they're kind of like over the road, not over the road, but over the tr um, rough road motorcycle. And I'm sorry to tell you they're not Honda motorcycles, sorry Susan. <laughs> and then um, we talked about a, Washington, uh, a new grant for traffic enforcement and uh, amending uh, an, an agreement with Pierce Transit. And so thank you. Our next meeting for parks will not be until January the 11th. So thank you very much, Mayor. All right, thank you very much. All right, Land Use and Transportation Committee, uh, Council Member Baruso. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we had our meeting on November 1st. Uh, we have items on B through F on the consent agenda for tonight and under eight ordinances. We have uh, C and D. D is our second reading enactment. Uh, the next meeting for LUTC will be December 6th at 5 p.m. All right. Thank you very much. Finance, Economic Development, Regional Affairs Committee, and otherwise known as FEDRAC. Uh, Councilmember Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, our next meeting is going to be at 5 p.m. on November 23rd um, here uh, in this building. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Lodging Tax Advisory Committee, LTAC. Council Member Asepa Dawson. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, we didn't have a meeting in November, so I don't have anything to report on. However, our next meeting is planned, scheduled for December 8th at 10 a.m. Thank you. All right. Uh, Regional Committee's report, uh, the PIC, the Public Issues Committee. Um, Council Member Moore. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, nothing to report. There was no meeting that took place this month. And... Um, That'll be it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Council President report. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank all of the volunteers that we have in our community here in Federal Way. You make Federal Way very, very special for all of us. And thank you so much. The Sound Transit Board will be uh, discussing where the South, the South OMF is going to be uh, cited or potentially will be cited. That's coming up really soon. Um, I'm not sure what it is that we can do at this point to stop it, but we have all agreed that Federal Way is not the preferred location and it, that it's Midway, but that decision is, um, is coming soon. And um, the last thing is a, is, is a great thing. Uh, years and years ago, I don't know exactly when, there was, I wasn't on council, there was, um, the council approved a cottage housing demonstration project. And a few years ago, that project started. It's over by Mirror Lake. It's called the Mirror Lake Highline Cottage Housing um, Demonstration Project. And it, um, Bill McCaffrey is the builder. His kids uh, swam with my kids years ago over at Twin Lakes. And um, just recently, last week, his project won the Regional Community of the Year Award at the Seattle's New Home Council's 12th, 12th Annual Tribute Awards. And this is really cool for Federal Way because I don't, you've probably seen if you're on 312th and you're by Mirror Lake and you see new houses, or there's a hill and there's like, I think 16 of these houses on this hill. They're smaller than a typical home is in Federal Way. Uh, if you've had a chance to go into them, they're, they're really, really well done and ve very nice. And it, it's a win for Federal Way. It puts us in the news. And it, it's a good thing for us. So congratulations, Bill. Uh, you represented us well. <laughs> and we hope that we get more cottage housing here in Federal Way. All right, thank you. Yeah, I just sent him an email today. And it's actually, it was in the front page of the uh, Mirror Online. So. Got some good recognition. Okay, um, now we're on to the most important part of our evening, which is public comment. Uh, as I said before, it's the birthday boy, Mr. Drake. You are up. Mayor. Yes. Do you want me to read the rules? Um, sure. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, Bob, can you hold on just for a sec? Go ahead. All right, the rules read, in accordance with state law, the city of Fudgeway prohibits any testimony regarding any campaign for election or promotion of or opposition to any ballot proposition during public comment. City Council rules of procedure prohibit any personal, impertinent, threatening, or slanderous remarks during public comment. The mayor may interrupt comments that continue too long or violate the rules of conduct. No speaker may convey or donate their time for speaking to another speaker. 
The mayor has the authority to preserve order at all meetings of the council and to cause the removal of any person from the meeting for being disorderly. All individual comments are limited to three minutes each. All right, thank you. The floor is yours. Good evening, mayor and council. It's good to be here in person. We are going to keep fighting for our city and businesses. We're not going to give up. We're going to, we're going to help clean up this city. We'll do it with or without your help. We're going to do it. Um, we have many issues in our city, crime, homelessness, drug addictions, garbage to clean up. We have gang problems. We have firearm issues. We have a lot to do. We had a simple ask from Andy two weeks ago to keep the sidewalks and thoroughfares of businesses and, and for citizens clear by adding additional language in the way of an ordinance. You know, people injecting drugs passed out, puking on public thoroughfares, blocking entrances to businesses. To be clear, this was an ask from local businesses wanting help from their police. And some voted, I feel like, to th throw businesses under the bus. You know, when are we going to look out for law-abiding citizens? I think we need to revisit this. I understand not wanting to criminalize certain things, but I, I really think we need to give this another look. Um, it feels like we're, we're hindering the ability of businesses to do business in the city uh, by allowing no method to, to help clear sidewalks in front of businesses. Um, it was merely a vote to carry it to the next meeting. Uh, we could have at least gone that far and had further discussions about it. Um, I also would like to revisit the 348th Park and Ride cleanup. Um, I think I, I, I heard the mayor say that when the county took care of their portion, that you were going to take care of our portion. So we've been down there, and it, it's a nightmare. It's a wetlands. Please, all of you. I know you've been down there. I know you were personally down there. Let's get it cleaned up. Um, it's disgusting down there. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bob. You came on the right day on your birthday because on uh, both your requests. Um, uh, first, actually, I wanted to let you know that the ordinance that you uh, mentioned uh, will be on for first and second reading on the uh, December 7th meeting. Secondly, um, John, can you please uh, uh, outline where we're at? Because this Friday, um, uh, we are, uh, can you talk about where we've been at with the 348th cleanup and what's happening, what we're scheduled for this Friday? Yes, Mayor. Uh, one of the reasons we've been uh, holding a bit is that the state is uh, starting up a, a, a master contract for pre-bid uh, contractors that are pre-vetted, pre-bid, prices all approved, so you can just hire off of a list that they've done all that work on. We were hoping that was going to be done by by or before Thanksgiving. It looks like they're going to be just slightly behind that. So we have gone ahead and said, can't wait any longer. Uh, and under the mayor's direction, we will be out there on Friday cleaning that site up that we've seen the pictures of from you. So I appreciate the, that and I apologize. Also, just today, um, can you talk about uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Homeless encampment cleanup at 7th and 320th today. Yeah, so the Fisher's Pond area, large area, as the mayor said, 7th and Pack Highway, or and 320th, was cleaned up today by city staff. Uh, it was a large encamp, well, it wasn't large, but was getting large quickly. Um, we were able to get that resolved about 90% today. I think they'll be in to finish it completely tomorrow. So that's two uh, that'll be done this week, one done already, and one will be done Friday. And Chief Neal, can you talk about 304th and Pack Highway? Yeah, so there's a, a large effort at 304th and Pack Highway. As you know, that's been a, a problem area for many years now, but there is a huge uh, cleanup underway there. That's why if you were to drive by there today, you, you might see carts and different things out towards the road. The reason for that is because they are being moved out so they can be cleaned up, and that then those people that are displaced there can, can be uh, addressed with now. So. Uh, 304th and Pack or 18th South approximately. There's a lot of work going on there today. All right. So a lot of work going on. Uh, thank you, Bob. All Mayor, right. Mayor, just yes. one quick question with regard to the 348th encampment cleanup. Yeah. So, John, did, is that going to include the um, gate that or the fence that uh, Pierce County Council Member Hans Zager is requesting 
For the border between King County and Pierce County? No, that's a very different area, okay. but we are working on that too. We, we're okay, spread we, pretty thin, but we're getting to them all. Would you send him an email, please? Yeah, he, no, I did, and he has answered that email already. No, I just talked to him two days ago, so perhaps you could follow up. Interesting. I've got his answer. Yes, I will absolutely follow Appreciate up. Appreciate that. You Thank bet. you. All right. Thank you. Getting it all done. All right, but we uh, we rely on our neighbors and our friends and our you know the folks out in the community. So you see these encampments, tell us where they are. We'll take care of it. We were uh, you know one of the things that when when my one on ones with John, um, I got to pull this thing so you guys can hear me. Um, you know we were we were waiting with that state bid, but at some point I just said we can't wait anymore. We just need to go out do this, move you know you know just get this stuff started because we're just not. It's unacceptable to leave it the way it is. So we're there. Okay, uh, um, Betty Taylor. Is Betty here? Yes. Hi, Betty. And then Deva Mandeville after that. Good evening, you guys. Um, so um, I'm coming in a way that I've never came before. And um, this is weird. I'm kind of nervous, but okay. All right, here we go. All right. <clears throat> Hold on. Stephanie, can you restart her clock? Please. Thank you. And, and, and Stephanie? Oh, thank and you. This is, this is not nothing personal against anybody here. Okay. I wish I could make it go away or even pretend that it never happened to ease my pain, but I can't and I won't. It's different when it's murder, only because you faced it with it every day in a different way. I don't care what people say. Don't get it twisted the way and the manner it happened. Going to court time and time again, coming face to face with the one who pulled the trigger while he sits in the courtroom and he's alive, but my Ezra Taylor is dead because this person made the dumb choice of pulling a trigger because he was mad, because someone pushed him down. So in ret retaliation, he decided to pull out his gun and pull the trigger, killing three people and injuring three. Also having the nerve to use a gun which he was told not to use or even have, violating a court order. So because of you not being able to control your anger, <sighs> you don't care about no one else's life but your own, so you shot others. <sighs> Why would somebody just shoot? Why, you guys, why would somebody just shoot out in the open and take lives? <clears throat> this is really hard for me. Oh, right now, I just, mom, we just, you know, there's too many shootings in the street. There's too many murders happening. I'll never, I'll never see my grandson again. And I, I'm not here representing no group or anything. It's just me. It's just me. And I'm representing my grandson because he can't speak for himself. But I wonder how do these people get guns in their hands and they shoot innocent people and they die and then the family has to suffer. And pain because they'll never see that person again. So, we, what are we going to do? They, they have no right to have guns, but they do. So, so Betty is talking about her grandson that was killed in front of La Familia Bar by a person who was in the bar, was pushed and came out and got on a motorcycle and started shooting as he went through. And her grandson had a security guard outfit on from working at Amazon, and he was trying to help, and he got shot in the head. This is what's happening in our community. David. Uh, 
I don't even, I, <laughs> how do you follow that? I, oh my God. Um, so Bob took half of my questions. You're well, you're glad, I'm glad it's your birthday, Bob, because you took half of my comments. So you're all welcome. You don't have to listen to me. Um, I was concerned about the park and ride. Awesome. Um, um, one of my other questions was, we used to be able to, so we had a discussion, Mayor Farrell, about um, how to report issues, whether it be potholes or homeless encampments or whatever you told me, eyes on better way, email us directly. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that. Um, and then now we can't comment on eyes on Federal Way. So I was wondering why that's like, we can't follow up with comments on there. That was one of my questions. Um, and then I also wanted to comment, I, I'm horrible at remembering time. I think it was two meetings ago um, or two months ago, it, um, Eastwind and New Horizon on Pack Highway um, was brought up and there was a little bit of conversation and a little bit of hush hush and then we're working on it and somebody else got shot and it's just, sending a lot of our already over depleted resources there. So I'd like an update on that. Um, and another thing about, he reminded me because of Christmas, um, is Santa gonna be coming to the neighborhoods this year on the fire trucks? Cause I was amazing last year and I would be willing to like spearhead fundraising for that to happen again. So let me know. Um, I'll have John get back to you on about, about that. Okay, <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then the ordinance thing, you said it's going to be revisited at the next meeting. So awesome. So my last question is, is I just want to read this statement. Um, um, this person was on a mission to create a positive image, image for federal way. And he didn't want to be driving down and seeing pot stores or stand near pot shops and smell it. Um, and then the person who made that comment asked to put to add the discussion about pot shops in our city to the agenda tonight on his way out of the council. So just putting that out there that we, we can't have it both ways. So that's all, all right. thank you. Dava, Dava, hold on. It's Dara. Oh, what's that? Dara. Dara, gosh darn it. <laughs> okay. um, uh, so with regard to the, the uh, people can comment on their own on the Eyes on Federal Way app, that is the best way. One of the things we do every Monday is I personally review it with our with all of our directors, mm -hmm. and we you know we methodically go through those lists. We get about between I monitor on Eyes on Federal Way how many requests we get per week. It's usually about 120 to about 140, and it varies whether it's garbage, debris, mm -hmm. flooding. So that's the probably the preferred way and the methodical way to approach it. What was happening is we had you know really a very small number of folks that were going on and commenting on everybody else's. And what we, if somebody gets on, on Eyes on Federal Way and reports it, they can continue to report on their own. But what, we're, what we don't have hmm. is people commenting on yours and that one and that one and that one and that one. And there was just something happening that was, let's just call it, not helpful. Um, and just not, not the way that the program was intended to be used, which was somebody trolling everybody's uh, in, entries. We need, if somebody has, if there is a grocery cart somewhere, we don't need 10 comments on that. Tell us where it's at, we'll go get it. Mm -hmm. And if you have an updated, but it's like, hey, it moved 10 feet, you can comment on it. If it's your request, you can comment on it. And if, and if you know, we actually just had on Eyes on Federal Way, somebody who um, had a situation where um, they got frustrated because that there had been too much time, you know, with a, mm -hmm. a parking situation. They reached out and said, "What the, what is going on?" So that that enabled us to go back and say, "Hey, this got mislabeled," and so we fixed it. So if if anybody goes to Eyes on Federal Way and there's not a you know a reply, and if it if it does if it seems like it's stalled, reach out to us via email, my office, uh, Public Works, Parks, and and inquire. And there is probably a, an internal system in there as well, where you can inquire about, "Hey, what, what's going on here?" Because I it is a, it's a methodical way to approach this. So I, that's the answer to that question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Ken Blevins. Uh, Mayor, council members, thanks for listening to me today. Um, thanks for the cookie, by the way. Thank you for um, your service, uh, council members that are leaving. So, um, but I just want to uh, make things clear real quick. The reason why, why you're leaving 
I hope everybody gets this, the incoming and so on. The reason why you're leaving is because um, we have to have council members on this, on up here. I'm talking to you too. <laughs> so um, the, the reason why we, uh, we need the council members here to work for Federal Way, okay? The agenda of King County is, has nothing to do with Federal Way. We need people fighting for the people of Federal Way, for our citizens, for a safer city, um, not pot shops. Come on. This, we've already voted this down as a city. If you really want to do it, put it up for vote. Um, it's kind of sneaky to then change the agenda so people don't really get to have an idea to be able to talk about stuff. Another thing I would uh, suggest is potentially um, go over what you're going to do and then let people talk about what you just talked about. Say what our opinion is about what you're just doing in the meeting. Yes, we don't want to do another um, a long meeting where we're there at midnight, but at the same time, let us comment about what you're doing. That way you know what we're talking about and you still aren't gonna listen, then you're probably gonna get voted out. So those of you that barely did make it in, um, please, again, listen to the people. Your work for us, and I appreciate it. You don't make very much money, I get it, but you don't work for King County. Also, anybody who's received any money from a pot shop should not be able to vote on this. Okay, you should recuse yourself. So I know one person up here for sure did, but the thing is these, uh, this money's coming in as an individual and that's gotta be looked at, okay? You shouldn't be able to get money to vote. That's the quid pro quo, right? And that's not working for uh, Federal Way citizens, that's working for pot shop person that, work, that lives in Mercer Island and owns property here, right? So let's, Focus on the city of Federal Way. Let's please focus on, again, the safety of Federal Way. Pot shops aren't gonna make us safer, okay? Maybe we can focus on the crime and continue to work with building our police department and um, listening to the people and what's going on in their neighborhood. Um, listen to the businesses out there. Um, I went and talked to a lot of businesses, broken window, they have glass coming, more broken windows, and so on. And um, the stuff that you guys have done voting for this 1220 and all that stuff and not fighting for Federal Way, but going along with it because somehow everybody's scared of this or that, it, none of that stuff is proven, okay? People can't just go sue and say, I'm gonna make this thing. It's just not the way things work. So we're gonna be watching you and we wanna work with you. So hopefully you guys are successful in making us a better city. So thank you very much. Uh, Nancy Justice and then Jen Gallagher. And after, uh, after uh, Jen Gallagher, then we've got Cynthia ricks mekatan And then, yeah. What's that? Oh, okay. okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm a resident of Federal Way, and I was recently surprised to hear at the last City Council meeting that there was no interest in following Enumclaw's footsteps to creating a resolution to address the discrimination taking place under these ever-changing vaccination mandates that are ruining people's lives on a daily basis. Instead, I heard that we are more concerned with the loss of money for the businesses adhering to these horrendous ideas coming from our capital. If this is purely an economic issue, it easily makes sense to not abide by the mandates as it's creating barriers for our businesses. It's more than that though, it's a human rights issue. We cannot in federal way, the city of opportunity, refuse services to people based on their private medical information. This is discrimination. It should be obvious apparent to everyone that this is wrong. There's numerous examples throughout history that show the direct and bloody consequences of the path we are on. We are granted life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in this country. These mandates directly conflict with those rights and place an undue burden on our businesses and citizens. I propose that Federal Way take the steps to follow in Enumclaw's footsteps, 
write up a resolution that bans the vaccination mandates and send a message to all of Washington that we will not discriminate in federal way. And uh, in addition, I didn't know I was going to hear Betty speak tonight, but um, what, what she spoke upon is on my mind every day when I see the news and what's going on. Um, I'm hearing a lot about Park 16 apartments and what's going on there. And there's mothers with children that are terrified. You know, they want out. It's a bi-weekly thing sometimes that there's shots. And um, they can look out their doors and see people with guns discussing it. And we need to take a bigger look at that. So things like what happened to Betty maybe don't happen to other people. Thank you, Nancy. Jen, one second before I call you up. I, I, you know what? Actually, I forgot, uh, Dara, on, on your comment about what's happening at the East Wind Motels and the two motels, uh, we're actually working on an ordinance um, uh, with regard to um, uh, certain guidelines that those type of uh, very short-term rentals will have to uh, abide by. And we're, we actually, because of the overtime patrols and the extra patrols that we're doing there, uh, we actually have, I met with the, the chief and his command staff about that issue last, uh, late last week. And we're also, again, working on this ordinance that's going to be coming before the council, uh, actually, I believe on December 7th as well, um, that will uh, really clamp down on the kinds of activities at that hotel and other hotels similarly situated. We just cannot tolerate that. And But we also have... Um, we're working with the management there, but if they're not if they're not going to clamp down, we're going to come down hard. And we've got we've got police officers there almost, you know, uh, hourly, uh, up and down. So we've got. Uh, I, I want to let you know that's been a real special emphasis. Okay. All right, Jen Gallagher. Hi everybody. It's nice to be here in person. As a longtime resident over 20 years, I just wanted to talk about the violence and crime that we are seeing in our city. Um, Ulta just got hit Friday. Their whole front area was wiped out and uh, the young women that were in that building were putting stock away, locked themselves in the back room while these people came in and wiped out their fragrance park department. <clears throat> these girls are in their 20s and they're frightened and they called the police and it was a very slow response and they're scared, we're, and we're scared. We can't shop in the city and feel safe. I appreciate that we're getting more police officers. I don't know what exactly that's gonna do with how limited they are. I've had two police officers in two separate situations while we're out on the streets where we're being harassed by people say we can't touch them, we can't even talk to them. We just have to ask them to move along. I had a sign ripped out of my hand, thrown on the ground. <clears throat> I'm five foot nothing, and this guy towered over me. It scared the snot out of me, honestly. But I, uh, the girls locked themselves in that back room, and I just shudder thinking of what happened if they really wanted to hurt them. And it wouldn't have been hard for them to get in that room and hurt them. So <clears throat> this, is, this is just one story that happens. I mean, we're seeing theft and you know, um, constantly shootings, stabbings, now murders we're hearing about, and uh, it's just got to end. But... What are we going to do until the new police officers get in, and what's going to be the big change when we do get some more officers? Because I don't feel like, as a community, we're being kept safe. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Jane. Um, I talked to the when I talked to the chief and uh, his command staff uh, late last week with regard to the timing of to get these 13 new officers uh, hired and. Uh, uh, to get them all uh, staffed up. We're looking at, by the time we get them all, if we do three or four a month, we can get there by June of next year. So that's that's what we're working on to go as fast as possible. And there is also the, the time where some of those are, are laterals and uh, and they can get right in right onto the streets, but some of them have to go through the academy, which is a, a lengthy process. We can only have put, um, the academy is a several month process. You can only put a certain number in an academy class and so part of our legislative ask will be to make sure that the legislature, um, uh, we're going to be talking about that soon, uh, has more funding to make sure that we can get these uh, more classes through the uh, Washington State Academy. 
Uh, Jen, I'm going to reach out. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pull the police report uh, from the Ulta incident. I will be there tomorrow uh, to talk to your manager, um, and uh, I'll bring uh, Bill with me, and I'll, 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 I'm going to pull the incident report and, and look at it, okay? Uh, thank, you for, thank you for letting us know about that. Um, I mean, we know about it. Thank you for, uh, you know, commenting on it today and, and uh, alerting me to your concerns. We'll, we'll take uh, your, your, the safety of your coworkers and everybody there very seriously. Okay, uh, Cynthia Ricks Macatan, is Cynthia back in the room? Yes. There she is. Hello. Good evening, Mayor. Council President Honda and the rest of the dais, thank you so much for letting me speak. I want to personally thank Council Members Baruso and Kraft for your service. We've appreciated you picking up your phone, answering your emails, being there to discuss these very tumultuous times. Youth violence, we know, is up for a variety of reasons. As uh, the Violence Prevention Coordinator at Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, working on the Youth Violence Initiative and being part of the Zero Youth Detention effort and addressing gun violence amongst youth countywide. And after hearing the very emotional um, testimony of one of our longtime residents, Ms. Betty, I'm going to personally miss having council members Kraft and Baruso at the table to discuss these issues. Um, council member Tran has also been very active in addressing youth issues and so has um, council member Moore. And even the mayor has shown up at some of those youth events that happened during the pandemic where we were able to get youth together. And so I'm just, and also council member Asafa Dawson has done so as well. I just want to thank you and know that we still need your input. We still need to address this issue so that incidents that happened to Miss Betty and her grandson don't help, don't affect us. So we're still gonna need your help. So please stay active, please stay involved and to the rest of the council members and to those who will be coming up, please know that this is a very serious issue addressing gun violence with youth. We're gonna need your patience, your understanding, your mercy, your grace, but most of all, your commitment to come to the table and really talk about it and really address it. So thank you all so much, and I'm really gonna miss you, Council Members Kraft and Baruso. Thank you. Council Member Elect Jack Walsh. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Council President Honda and all of the, the City Council. Uh, I would first like to just say that I, I think that Betty has left, but I know that my heart and I think the hearts of everybody here goes out to her. I cannot even imagine going through what she and her family have gone through. And, um, you know, uh, the uh, violence is certainly the number one issue that we need to address. Right now, I am. I guess the, the best words are disappointed that some of the outgoing members of the council are bringing up the subject of pot shops in Federal Way once again. Uh, twice, the voters of Federal Way have voted down retail pot shops, twice. I helped lead that effort both times, and there was a profound, resounding no to pot shops. And one of the council members who is proposing it now was on that side before, and now suddenly that has changed. And I think it is disrespecting the voters of Federal Way. It is disrespecting the voters of Federal Way, and I am disappointed that that is happening. Um, I was just looking at the PDC report and noticed that uh, two of the biggest contributors were people from Medina who own pot shops and want to open them here in Federal Way, they're not Federal Way residents, 
they are Medina residents that want to open pot shops in Federal Way. Once again, very disappointed. I hope that this evening the council will say no to that. If it does not say no to that, we will be saying no to it very, very soon. Why waste the council's time tonight? There's no reason to waste the council's time tonight when it would be changed in very short order anyway. So I would encourage you to reject it, to get it to a, a quick dismissal of it. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Council Member Elect Erica Norton. Good evening, Federal Way City Council. I was asked to come and speak tonight about uh, the marijuana shop thing. So I wasn't really prepared, so it's just kind of off the cuff. So as, from what I remember, we voted this down two times, and I kind of feel like it's just a, a final, you know, goodbye to us from uh, a certain person up there who's, I, I'm really confused about why it's even up. Uh, for a vote, but I'm hoping that all of you will listen to us. It's something that I say every time I come up here. Will you please listen to us? We don't want pot shops here. We voted. I personally voted um, yes for the first one. And then after I found out that everybody that it was such a huge resounding no from the city, I thought, you know what, I'll just vote no the second time. Because there's pot shops in Fife, you guys. I, I really don't care about marijuana. I'm I, I'm not, I don't smoke it myself, but if you want some weed, you can go down to Fife. It's, it's right there. So why do we need them here? I feel like we've got so much crime and so much trouble here. And when you drive past some of those marijuana shops, it just doesn't feel good. It's kind of a seedy kind of, kind of area. And I think we have enough of that here. So let's just try to work on the issues that we have right now in Federal Way, which is the gun crime and the drug addiction problems, the camps that are going on. I think that's really important that we focus on that and not bringing pot shops here. Let's try to preserve and take care of the businesses that are already here. They need us, you know, they need our support. And I don't think bringing in that kind of industry is, is the right answer for federal ways. So thank you for listening to me again and hopefully um you guys will make the right decision tonight because it's just going to get overturned in a couple months so i i'm going to make sure it does because when i get up there my job will be representing the people of federal way david van vliet And then the last pink sheet I have will be Anna Patrick. Good evening, thank you. Um, you know, as a city, we're already bracing for the onslaught of collateral damage that's gonna come along with the extended stay hotel. And so I'm just kind of curious how now all of a sudden, and I mean all of a sudden on the way out, we're hearing that pot shops are going to be a great idea you know and and I've, I've listened to this council many times talk about strategies for economic development and I'm wondering where pot shops come in as a great strategy for economic development if that's the best you can do I'm looking forward to the new council and maybe we'll have some more creative ideas now just to to sort of highlight uh, economic development and the things that are working against us. House Bill 1220 is, is expressly designed to destroy single-family zoning and single-family housing and property values that is not economically sound. Uh, an increase in the sales tax for the sole purpose of purchasing open drug uh, hotels, open-air drug bazaars essentially, in downtown Federal Way does not promote economic development. 13 new laws in the state of Washington to, to essentially make policing illegal is not sound economic development. And uh, mandates 
on the part of the state, the county, and the acquiescence on the part of the city um, does not promote economic development. That's why I agree with Nancy's proposal that we consider something that, that makes it um, uh, an ordinance that says you cannot discriminate uh, um, against people based on their, their personal medical choices in federal way and make it a welcoming city that says, hey, no matter what your personal medical choices are, you're welcome in federal way. So um, as economic development is, continues to be on the, uh, on the radar, I hope you'll consider some more creative choices than pot shops. Thanks. Anna Patrick. Hi, um, evening mayor and council and public. So um, I would like to, um, I concur, the last thing we need is to focus on pot shops in Federal Way. I'm really shocked that this was even brought forward uh, considering we voted against it twice now. So, uh, and definitely considering some have received money um, when they campaigned from um, people that have vested interest financially, uh, like a quid pro quo kind of thing there going on. And so um, they shouldn't be voting um, if they received funding that way. And then also, um, you know, the past month, I have two teenage daughters that work in the city and have friends throughout the city and everywhere they go, there's shootings, like within a block of them. It, it's, it's like a landmine, uh, you know, just the, everywhere we go, there's shootings. So this, this should be what we're talking about tonight, not pot shops. And <laughs> our nephew was murdered because of pot. So I don't think we need more pot in our community. Um, this wasn't locally, it was across the country, but um, it's not, it, it can cause destruction. We should be talking about getting pot out of our schools. We should be um, trying to get drugs out of our community. That should be our priority, not bringing more drugs to our community. So, thank you. Okay, that was the last pink sheet I have, but we do have a caller in, Francisco Segura. We don't have him on the line, Mayor. Oh, no? Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, Francisco wanted to uh, testify, but uh, he's no longer on the line. Uh, okay, that's the last pink sheet I have. Thank you, everybody, for your public comment. And once again, I think it is the most important thing that we do while we're here. Uh, and your voice is heard. All right, um, now we're on to the consent agenda. These items have gone through committee, can be passed all at once. I'm gonna read each one of the items, and then if I'll, I'll ask if a council member uh, wants to pull for separate consideration. Okay, let's we'll see if I can do this without fogging up my glasses. Um, item A, minutes for the November 3rd, 2021, regular and special meeting minutes. Item B, 2021 Transportation Improvement Board, TIB, uh, Complete Streets Grant Funding Application. Item C, South 348th Street, NHS Preservation Project, Preliminary Design Phase Report. Item D, Military Road, South Preservation Project, Preliminary Design Phase Report. Item E, Greenway Pavement Marking Phase 2, 2021 Project, Final Acceptance. Item F, Resolution Adopting a Work Plan and Public Participation Plan for Updating the Comprehensive Plan and Development Regulations pursuant to RCW 36.70A.130. Councilor, is there an item that, that a, a member would want to pull for separate consideration? Okay, Council President Honda, do you have a motion with respect to A through F? I move approval of items A through F on the consent agenda. Second. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matters passed unanimously. All right, now we're on to the public hearing for uh, item A for the 2021-2022 mid-biennial budget adjustment continued from November 3rd, 2021 as required by RCW 35A.34. Staff report uh, presented at the November 3rd meeting by Steve Groom, uh, finance director. The record was left open for any additional comments or questions. Uh, Steve, you wanna uh, maybe uh, hit some of the finer points or do you have a presentation? You know, uh, th thank you, Mayor. The, uh, the 
the item is in your packet. I do have the same exact presentation available if there's any questions that I presented at the FedRAC Council meeting. Uh, all, of the, all of the items in the amendment are essentially for three purposes. One of them is to amend the budget for, the, for items that the City Council has previously approved that we need to get into the budget. Second thing is to extend some project spending forward from uh, 2021 to 2022. Steve, Steve uh, Director Groom. Let, let's go through the PowerPoint. We've got an audience here. Let's. I think because this is a biennial budget adjustment, we should. We should. Um, I, I think it is important. If you could just go through it, maybe hit some highlights. But let's see the slides. I'm happy to do that. All I'm right, happy to you. do that. Uh, the the uh, purpose for doing a budget amendment is uh, the, this is a fairly routine process. We do it several times a year, and there are typically three reasons why we do amend the the budget. We want to make sure that we've uh, synced up the budget for anything that the city council has approved that the budget needs to be amended for. We also want to extend some project spending forward from 2021 to 2022 so, we, so that everything that has been previously approved rolls forward. And we also want to uh, take care of some funding needs for things that, that we now have savings for that weren't known at the time of the budget adoption. In the, in the, uh, in the agenda packet, uh, there's, a, there's a fairly detailed table and we want to make sure that everything that we do is transparent and accountable. Uh, so in the packet, we've listed every single dollar amount and a description and these are the highlights that you would probably want to, to make sure that, that we uh, highlight the, the biggest dollar amounts. We're transferring 700,000 to support the community center and 150,000 to Dumas Bay. And that's essentially to make sure that we uh, main, maintain the fund balance that we've got in our policies. Uh, we've also got some insurance premium increases and those, uh, while they are uh, surprises, it's, not, it, it's never a surprise that insurance goes up. So we just need to make sure that we keep our budget uh, in sync with that. Uh, there is also the, uh, the, the, the fairly material item that we approved where we are expanding the police force. That's the addition of 13 officers and two staff. There's also some vehicles. Uh, and that is, uh, that's a high priority. And, we're, and, we're the, and so this budget amendment makes sure that, that, uh, that the budget is, doesn't become an obstacle. Uh, there's also some, uh, there's also a fairly material item in the further a consultant to prepare uh, some sub area planning related to the south, uh, to the sound transit station. Uh, there's grant funding available. We wanna make sure we get in, involved. And there's also uh, a budget amendment for IT security. Uh, we don't intend to publicize or go into, into too much detail uh, about the details because cities across America are increasingly targets. But when we have opportunity, when we have savings, we, we, we do want to make sure that we keep uh, that we take care of our city. Uh, that was the general fund. In uh, other funds, uh, there is also some some uh, budget adjustments, and this is just an abbreviated list. Uh, we want to make sure that, that, that we're being clear that we're doing things that we know are priorities. Uh, there's an overlay program, which is primarily the 2020 overlay project that was completed in 2021. Uh, there's a body-worn camera program that uh, takes care of year one and year two, that, and that's in the traffic safety red light photo fund. There's a carry forward of residential street arterial and CDBG program. Uh, we're acknowledging the jail services increase in that. It, it, what we're doing there is we're adjusting the budget so that we maintain our fund balance uh, 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 reserve percentage properly. Uh, there's also some transportation CIP projects. And then, and then there's the transfer to the police uh, vehicle expanded uh, fleet and patrol car fund where we're adding 28 vehicles. So outside of that, uh, uh, we're taking care of council approved items. There's a, there's a, there are three schedules in your packet that show the, all of the fund balances for every single fund in the city. Uh, the, uh, the original adopted fund and then the uh, first uh, amendment and then the current proposed amendment. And what you'll see is that you'll see that the uh, total fund balances in 2021 are all increasing. That's essentially because we're acknowledging some grant funding that's coming in. It's all good news for the city. We're uh, being, I wouldn't say uh, nimble or agile, but we're being re uh, responsive to the, to the changes that needed to be made. Uh, so with that, uh, staff recommends approval. Now this agenda item is a hearing. So this is for a, a, any public comment. And then I believe uh, on item eight on the agenda is where we actually have the uh, uh, ordinance. So with that, I will uh, close the presentation. And I think this is a hearing. So back to you, Mayor. All right, uh, before we turn it over to any public comment, are there any questions for Director Groom? Okay, seeing no questions. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, sir. Um, all right, uh, do we have any public comment for this? No, Mayor, I don't have anyone signed up. All right, and as, uh, as Steve just mentioned, that action on this item 
uh, will take place uh, under the ordinance section on the agenda. All right, um, so uh, have, hearing no public comment, no pu comments by the, uh, by the uh, or questions by the council, let's move to the next item with, yes. Uh, I need to, move to close Hunt. the public hearing. Oh yeah, please. Um, I move. Oh, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. It's been a motion, a second to close the public hearing with respect to um, item six A, the binding of budget adjustment. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now I will um, on. I will now open the public hearing for item B, the program year 2022 uh, CDBG annual action plan. We'll have a staff report from Sarah Bridgeford, our community services manager. Good evening. Um, Actually, Sarah, before you get started, Dara, before I forget, uh, John found out that um, on the, the South King Fire and Rescue is doing Santa in the neighborhoods on the weekend of December 10th and 11. Um, and um, uh, we'll be doing the canned food collection with them on the routes. So yeah. just FYI, thank you. Could I add to that? Yeah, please. Um, according to uh, some of the firefighters I've talked to, they're actually gonna have a route that, where you can actually see where they're at this time and you'll know as they're getting closer to your home or your area. So it'll be, um, last year was really fun. This year will be funner because you'll know when they're coming. All right, thank you. All right, Sarah, Great. floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Farrell, Council President Honda, and members of the council. It is my pleasure this evening to be sharing with you the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan. So the policy question before you is should City Council approve the program year 2022 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan? This is a program of the U.S. Department of Housing. Oh, I'm sorry. So I thought I hit share and I did not. I... One more step. Oh. Double click. Yes. Thank you. You know, we're back in, we're back in, in person and there are new technology uh, requirements. Um, so with that, a CWG overview. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> I thought I had that one down and uh, not quite. Um, so the CWG program is a program of the U.S. Housing and Urban Development. It provides annual grants to jurisdictions to provide decent housing, suitable living environments, and economic opportunities. These programs are specifically for low and moderate income residents. CDBG has three national objectives. All projects must meet one of these objectives. They are to benefit low and moderate income persons, the elimination of some in blight and urgent need. Uh, all of our projects fall under that first category. The other two uh, don't, we, d we tend not to see them. Usually we would see like disasters. They're not things that we qualify for at this time. This is part of our 2020 through 2024 consolidated plan. That plan is to assess affordable housing, community development needs, and market conditions that facilitate place-based solutions for our local projects. Our goals for this plan are expand economic opportunities, preserve affordable housing, prevent and address homelessness, and establish and maintain suitable living environments. Each year, we have an annual action plan that implements our consolidated plan. This is required by HUD for any jurisdiction that receives those CDBG funds. It's a summary of the actions and activities that we're planning, and this will be our third year of our consolidated plan. It's a technical document that's produced in a HUD system, and we base this on our 2021 allocation. Uh, as is typical, we won't actually submit this to HUD until we have our 2022 allocation. Our program year starts on January 1st. We have not had our allocation typically until April, sometimes as, as late as August. So it, there is a delay in getting these funds. This is uh, the division of funding. 65% will be spent on community economic revitalization funding. 20% on planning and uh, administration, and 15% on public services. There are caps on both planning and admin and public services. 
and then the rest of those funds can go to that other category. With our planning and admin, this will include um, the administration of requests for proposals, uh, contracting, subrecipient sub compliance, uh, drafting of our plans and reports, and other related administrative compliance requirements. It also includes community engagement and outreach. One thing that I'll note is that new in 2022, uh, I say potential here, but uh, with council action, we do have that new DEI analyst position, which is partially funded with CDBG. So while it says potential again, that is included in this annual action plan. Our proposed uh, public services, this is year two of a two year funding. They apply competitively in our request for proposals and the Human Services Commission evaluates those proposals and makes recommendations to city council for consideration. So this is just the second year of, of uh, those projects. We see a mix of employment programs with the MSC YES program, Orion Employment Services, Apprenticeship and Non-Traditional Employment for Women, and Partner in Employment. They all provide a variety of employment services. Um, the Federal Way Inclusion Program provides services for people with disabilities, and that's uh, through the Community Center. We have El Centro de la Raza with a um, uh, resource and referral program, and then fusion for their transitional housing. This year, in response to our request for proposal for community and economic revitalization funding, we had uh, three applications, all of which, I'm sorry, two applications, and the housing repair program. So all three are fully funded. The housing repair program will receive just over 200,000. That's a city operated program. Highline business development, is receiving 90,000 for the Small Business Development Center and Start Zone. And then Fusion Transitional Housing is receiving um, funds for the acquisition of another transitional housing unit. Uh, this is our timeline. We opened our public comment period on October 11th. The Human Services Commission had a public hearing on October 18th. We did not go to Parks, Rec, Human Services and Public Safety as that meeting was moved, so we came directly to council this evening. And then uh, once we have our allocation, it'll probably be about a 45 day delay and we'll submit to HUD along with King County and other jurisdictions. In this plan, I would just call um, a couple highlights. We do not have a contingency project included. If something were to change, we'd come back to council. We do intend to conduct feasibility on a minor home repair program for older adults as well as the first time home buyers program. And we'll conduct those feasibility uh, studies in 2022. Typically the commission will recommend uh, pro rata adjustments to planning and admin, public services and surf projects if the annual allocation is different than anticipated. And uh, they did so with their recommendation to city council that's reflected in your motion as well. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Council President Honda. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's good to see you in person. <laughs> On the um, fusion transitional housing, that's to buy a new unit? That is correct, yes. So I'm asked this often, and I know the answer, but I'd like you to, to answer this. If something were to happen and fusion were no longer to operate the units, what happens to the, the houses that the city has purchased? Yes, uh, so the city actually does, uh, does not purchase them, but we do have what's called an affordability covenant and there's a deed of trust also on the property. So if the use of that property were to change, those funds would come back to the city either through a sale, uh, we could pursue it through that deed of trust and the covenant as well. Thank you. Councilmember Sefa Dawson. Yeah, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, in the report, the um, the PY, is that program year or yes. uh, fiscal year? It is program year, which runs January, January 1. January through December. Yep. Okay. Um, and, okay. May, I, may I provide a clarification? And you, you and, and council know this and others may know this as well. Um, the program year runs on the calendar year and public services and planning and admin with those caps have to be spent within that year. Some capital projects will have a longer period of performance. So we're able to kind of track that 
as part of a whole portfolio. If there's a delay in acquiring a property, for instance, they have time to do that even if it moves into a later year. Uh, we have other considerations that I won't go into, but we do track for that as well. And then my other comment is in your report you talk about um, um, inclusion and um, um, so I just want to say thank you for considering and um, looking into the um, inequity and all that work. So I just want to say thank you for centering all the different programs that you have listed in this um, plan. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Council President Honda. Thank you. Under apprenticeship and non-traditional employment for women, how many women will be helped with that? Let me um, look in. And I would also clarify, they serve, they will serve men in that program as well. Okay. Um, so a Good new, to hear. A, a new um, used to serve only women, and that is uh, not the case anymore. So if you will give me just a second, and I will look that up. I don't know that offhand. Um, it is in here, though. So we are... It is on page 24 of the, the plan, and uh, that actually serves three individuals, for, so it is the full program cost for those individuals. So how, uh, if someone is watching this tonight or hears about this and they're interested in this, how would they be able to take part in this? Would they contact you or? They are welcome to contact uh, us in community services and we can connect them to the program. We don't do any of the intakes or the eligibility directly and the agencies will. And I will say that ANU is one of those programs that typically will serve over 20 federal way residents. We just fund a small portion of the residents who access service. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> You're, are you ready to close the hearing? I'm just about, yes. All right, so I have a, something to say, but then I'll close it. Okay. We so, actually, we have public comment. Yeah, I, yeah, that's it. Oh, we have public comment? We do, and there, there is actually one. Okay. One. Well, then I'll, I'll just simply really quickly say, if you're interested uh, and you're listening, the housing repair program does allow for you to, if you're low income, you can apply to repair your roof uh, if you need housing repair, and you can go through Sarah for that. I am. Thank you. Hello. Good evening again. So this time I'm wearing a different hat as your human services commissioner, <laughs> um, one of the very talented group. Um, thank you all so much um, for hearing the great presentation that Sarah provided. We deliberated long and hard reviewing all of the applications. Um, we looked at equity, we looked at need, we looked at accessibility, we looked at the funding and dollars being leveraged and the viability of the organizations and tons of different criteria. So um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have about our process. And I'm thankful for the, my fellow commissioners who were there. Um, we take this very seriously, and we love the work of the staff. They're great in explaining some of the complicated requirements and regulations. And as a former CDBG uh, coordinator, it's, there are tons of requirements. Um, and um, I also want to give a great shout out to Brittany. I know she will be leaving. We wish her the best in her future endeavors. Oh. We're going to miss her. Um, so thank you all so much. And if you have any questions about the work that the commission has done, um, in review of the plan, please let me know. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Council President Honda, I see you've got your microphone. Thank you. I just want to thank you, Cynthia, for your service on the commission. Uh, I believe it's one of the hardest working commissions, and they do a really tough job, and they do a tough job for us on council because they make such great recommendations, and they're, it's a lot of work that that commission does, so thank you. And that's exactly what I was going to say also. Cynthia, and I, I see Jack Walsh is also in the audience on the Human Services Commission. Is there, is it, would, raise your hand if anybody else is here from the Human Services Commission. Betty Taylor is. Thank you, Betty Taylor. Thank you so much. It is one of our hardest working commissions. They really pour over all of those applications 
and they do a fabulous job. It makes it so much easier when it finally gets to council. So thank you for your, for your hard work. Uh, so Mayor, um, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of closing the hearing? Aye. 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 I move approval of the program year 2022 CDBG annual action plan with the conditions recommended by the Human Services Commission and authorize the mayor to execute all necessary documents to implement the plan and the corresponding funding agreements with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Second. 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 Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good evening, Mayor, Council President Honda, and Council members. The policy question before you tonight is should the Council authorize the Mayor to execute the proposed 2021 Police Support Services Association Collective Bargaining Agreement? The most recent PSSA contract expired on December 31st of 2020, and negotiations began earlier this month, and a proposed tentative agreement was reached for 2021. The proposed contract consists of a cost of living wage adjustment for the PSSA members equal to what non-represented employees in the city received for 2021. That was 2% uh, effective January 1st and 1% effective July 1st. The total increase to the 2021 budget is $56,693 and the total cumulative cost of the 2021 PSSA contract is $2.3 million. On November 11th, the PSSA members voted unanimously to ratify the contract proposed before you in a vote of 24 to zero. And we'll continue collective bargaining for a successor agreement to the 2021 contract that's before you tonight. The mayor's recommendation is to approve the proposed collective bargaining agreement with the Federal Way Police Support Services Association. And as it's pretty straightforward contract, I don't have a presentation for you tonight. Do you have any questions? Council, do you have any questions? Council President Honda? Oh, I don't, but I have a motion. Oh, please proceed. Okay. I move approval of the proposed 2021 collective bargaining agreement with the Federal Way Police Support Services Association and authorize the mayor to execute said agreement. Second. Okay. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passes unanimously. Thank you. Great job, Vanessa. Thank you very much. Thanks for your work on this. Uh, item B, proposed settlement in the matter of uh, F Felix Feliz Bordonado versus Kaiser et al. Staff report from Ryan Call, our city attorney. How are you? I'm sure it is, Jason. Does she not pencil out of it? Thanks. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> All right. Seems like it should be simple, but there's a lot of clicking. Um, I'm here tonight to present, uh, well, to seek approval for two settlements in two separate lawsuits. The first one is the Felice Bordonada v. Kaiser et al. lawsuit. We were one of four named defendants. Uh, the U.S. Post Office was one, and they were dismissed early in the case. And then there were the driver in the in the accident was uh, a defendant, and then um, property owner, property developer. So a little bit of background. Um, plaintiff in this case was riding her bicycle on the sidewalk when she was run over um, by a vehicle that failed to obey a stop sign as, as it was leaving a commercial driveway. The plaintiff did suffer severe injuries in this case, uh, some disfiguring uh, injuries that were permanent. The driver of the vehicle had the minimum insurance 
re require by state law, which is $25,000, which was not near enough to cover the medical expenses and loss suffered by the plaintiff. Um, as part of the lawsuit, the plaintiff alleged the city was jointly and severally liable based on the design of the roadway along with the other co-defendants. So e what that means is that even though the driver was likely entirely or largely at fault in this case, um, because of joint and several liability, we had quite a bit of liability exposure in this matter. Um, even if we were found to be 1% at fault, um, we could potentially have to pay the entire um, judgment in this matter. So with that in mind, we agreed to mediation. Um, council's been briefed on this several times in, in executive session, but um, for the public, um, through mediation, we were able to come up with a settlement agreement. Uh, the city's share of the settlement is $425,000, requires council approval. $250,000 of this total would be paid by the city, which is essentially our deductible. It's what's called self-insurance retention. That would come out of the city's risk management fund. And the, the balance of that uh, $425,000 would come from the city's insurer. The city's insurer has already uh, agreed to this proposal as part of mediation. As part of this, the city would uh, admit no liability, accept no liability in, in the matter, but um, it does release the city from all claims in this lawsuit, and the case would be dismissed. The mayor's recommendation is to approve the settlement. Does council have any questions? Council, any questions? All right. Council President Hunter, do you have a motion? I move approval of the proposed settlement. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passed unanimously. All right, item C, proposed settlement in the matter of Carol Williams uh, versus City of Federal Way et al. Ryan? I'm just going to pull up here. That's right. Williams? Mm -hmm. All right, this next matter is what we call a trip and fall case. Um, plaintiff in this case tripped over exposed bolts that were sticking up out of the sidewalk um, after a post office box was removed. Um, it's a little unclear as to who removed the post box or who even owned it at this point. Um, the city, well, the plaintiff complained of injuries to her foot and knee. She did have some documented medical uh, loss. The city had no notice of the exposed bolts and did not remove or install the post office, box, post office boxes. Um, and we had no special duty to the plaintiff. Um, I think I confused this case in the last case now that I'm looking at this. The US Post Office was dismissed from this case early on. Um, they were a, a defendant in this case, not the last case, I'm sorry. Um, we went to mediation um, with very little money to offer. Um, Council authorized up to $7,500 to settle this matter. Plaintiff agreed to that amount. Um, this is a very smart business decision to uh, settle this case at $7,500. The city is self-insured in this matter, meaning we'll just pay for this out of our risk fund um, if council approves it. The mayor's recommendation is to approve the settlement. Are there any right. questions? Council, any questions? All right, Council President Honda. I move approval of the proposed settlement. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Matter passes unanimously. Aye. All right. Um, now, the added item, item D, acceptance of grant funds for SB 5476 Therapeutic Court Grant Program. We'll have a staff report from, well, actually, it's not a staff report. It's our honorable judge, uh, the elected and uh, separate branch, Dave Larson. Thank you, Mayor Farrell. Um, it was my last election. I am officially <laughs> going to be retiring at the end of this term. So it's already, so uh, I got it on my phone, four years, one month, and so many days. But anyway, well, thank you for adding this. I really appreciate it, uh, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Council President. The, uh, uh, the timing of this is such where we have, once the state sends us the 
the contract, we have 10 days to return it, and that's before the next council meeting. And so I very much appreciate having this added so we can get it approved. And uh, this is what we talked about earlier. The council had passed the resolution on the sequential intercept model and, and really trying to develop a real strategy for how to address people as they come through the court system and uh, kind of very deliberate in how we approach things and provide some organization. So the grant was $271,875. $24,000 of that's gonna go to what's called sequential intercept mapping, which will benefit all of South King County. It will benefit, uh, in fact, Sarah Bridgeford's, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing uh, me to use uh, Sarah Bridgeford in this process too. Of course. So it's gonna, it's gonna benefit the entirety of South King County because we'll know where every service is, how they relate to each other, et cetera. So that's gonna be a big deal. The rest of it will be used for what's called uh, uh, peer navigators. And the idea is uh, that uh, we'll be contracting with uh, Peer Washington, Peer Kent specifically, to uh, provide peer navigators, people with lived experiences that will actually help people navigate the system. And uh, that's what uh, we'll be using that for because that'll be the interface that's missing right now. Because once we, the really where the failure comes in is when the court orders somebody to go do something a lot of the folks can't figure out what day it is, and we're asking them to go all do this stuff, and they, they're incapable of getting it done, they fail, they go to jail, all kinds of things that happen because we're not out there trying to, at least until they're able to be on their own two feet, uh, uh, we're not, we have nothing helping them. You know, probation is something that's been traditionally used, but we're not in traditional times when it comes to these issues. So, so the peer navigators will, will help. This is basically a demonstration a project is what we're doing. I've been asked by Representative Goodman to speak on Thursday to the Public Safety Committee of the House of Representatives on this concept. Uh, and so we'll see uh, what happens. Representative Taylor from our 30th district is responsible for getting this money for uh, uh, four and a half million dollars for the biennium for the, for the courts. The first time in state history that local courts have received state funding. And so uh, this will go a long way because we're dealing with an issue that isn't all the cities are forced to fund the response in within their city, but it's really a regional issue. And all you gotta do is be involved in the system, see how it gets pushed from city to city to city. And by kind of partnering, which was what we're doing with Des Moines in this demonstration project, partnering with this, we can show how you can actually uh, have a real strategy that'll work. And uh, it won't work for everybody, but uh, it will work, uh, at least we won't fail on our end. And we, we've been failing on our end when it comes to the lack of any deliberate plan or organization to keep people successful. So I'll be glad to answer any questions, but I greatly appreciate you passing this this evening. Well, first, thank you being, Your Honor, thank you for being such a leader on this issue. Thank you. And we very much appreciate your, uh, t tell the group about your, your motto about oh, the. Uh, I run a repair shop, not a junkyard. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> And that's very well stated. And I, for a person who spent three years in a municipal court before I became a county prosecutor, I think you've really, you know, we're all in your debt for your leadership on these issues. Well, so. I'm only one person. There, we got Judge Robertson, we got yep. all the staff and the prosecutors and the defense attorneys, probation, yep. all the folks that really uh, make this thing work. Appreciate and, it. And sometimes we don't make it work, and that's <laughs> what we're trying to fix. That's right. Okay. Um, oh, Council Member uh, Kraft. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Judge Larson, for being here and for uh, advocating for the sequential intercept model. I know that we've talked about this in our conversations, but for the public who are here and who are watching, it's my understanding that the peer navigators will have a release of information when they, when they, um, are, so they're able to report back. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 we were going to employ them by the court, but we decided to keep it separate so that they'd be some confidentiality. But they'll be they'll, the, um, the 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 model I want to use is I don't it doesn't have to be connected to a case. Mm -hmm. So in other words, somebody comes in, it could be on a a suspended license charge where there's real no ongoing supervision. But if somebody needs services, the peer navigator will help them navigate to get them. And uh, but it could and it could be all the way to our community court. But uh, but yeah, there'll be some reporting back. We want we really want the trust to be built up. Uh, we're going to look more at results. Um, we're going to uh, be using different um, measurements to see how successful things are. Uh, but uh, really, uh, you can imagine anybody that's, uh, that's struggling with a behavioral health issue and then the court gives them this laundry list of things to do and then just says you're on your own. 
but that, that it, we will be using some of those in the community courts especially some of the other issues we may not be as we may not be monitoring folks as much it's going to be more because I've talked about this before there's individual impacts mm -hmm. and there's community impacts individual impacts a lot of people never commit a crime but yet they have behavioral health issues uh, okay. addiction mental illness we have other people that cause community impact mm -hmm. the idea of the courts is that the perfect thing about the courts is that it's where those two intersect and the idea is to push people back to, to dealing with their individual impacts and not creating community impacts. So, so this is similar to the lead model? Yes, in fact, well, it's lead for courts, essentially. Yeah. But it's not necessarily diversion. There could be, it could be a suspended sentence where somebody's actually sentenced. It could be an agreement called a stipulated order of continuance where it's an agreement if they do th certain things, the charges will be dismissed. But the idea is to make it kind of the Swiss Army knife. Sure. And to meet, to p meet people where they are and try to, to try to, like I use this analogy all the time. Right now, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, and we all in the in the industry see our piece of the puzzle, and we think we're the answer, right? But all the people we serve see is a bunch of jigsaw puzzle pieces strewn about. Great. And the idea is to make them the jigsaw puzzle and see what's missing in them and fix that. And I, I guess my last question is: Will any of the funding be able to go to the city prosecutor's office? It's not it's not dedicated for that, but okay. uh, but it, it, the bottom line is this year. In fact, the purpose of the meeting Thursday is to look at uh, my understanding to provide more funding. This was, we had uh, in terms of the grants, we had uh, nine million dollars in grant applications for four and a half million. So uh, it's not all about money either. My presentation will be about it's got to be about coordination. It's Definitely. about using using resources in a in a in a intelligent strategic way because right now we're very program based we're about making the person fit the program instead of the program fit the person great and thank need, you so anyway i don't know if i'm answering your question no you did thank okay, you i thanks. appreciate it all right uh, council member Kirchmar? thank you mayor uh, judge so um without getting into a lot of discussions on different with, with the sequential intercept model it, it gets a little confusing so let's say i've always said that if a kid gets caught they're the lucky ones so say I'm a kid, you, I don't know who gets arrested anymore. It used to be a, for a misdemeanor in a municipal court, it'd be like shoplifting or, yeah. but let's say a kid comes to your court and you're using this model. Let's say I'm a kid and I'm just new to your court. What happens to me? Okay. So uh, when you're talking about the system itself, there's different stages of the process. There's uh, the se sequential inter intercept model has six stages. The, the com zero, um, uh, intercept zero is the community. Intercept one's law enforcement. Intercept two is the initial appearance in court. Uh, intercept, yeah, yeah. In, in, initial appearance in court. Intercept three is like your therapeutic courts, things of that nature. Intercept four is the jails. Intercept five is probation. And so, at every one of those intercepts, you're trying to link people up with to 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 meet the needs. So, if somebody comes in for an arraignment, we're looking towards. Um, getting them set up with the things that might be fueling their criminal behavior. What the biggest mistake we make in the system now is we, we, well, first of all, therapeutic courts are absolutely essential, but what we've been doing is waiting until people are out of control, and then we use therapeutic courts to try to address it. Instead of that first time they're ever in court, the very first time you try to identify what the issues are, and then get them referred then. And we've been very fortunate, and the people of Federal Way need to be proud. We're the only municipal court uh, in King County that's partnered with King County on a program called PALS, uh, Pretrial Assessment and Linkage Services, where we can get people assessed within 24 to 48 hours and get them on the track for wraparound services and everything after their arraignment. So that's intercept, intercept two, we get them in the arraignment. And then when there's a dispo disposition of the case, right, a, either, some kind of disposition, you're always looking to get them into services. And that's the way we can separate, like I've talked about before, the can'ts from the won'ts. Right? The can'ts are the people that can't manage their life and we help them. The won'ts are the one that refuse. And that's what the punitive system is for, is the won'ts. So that, that whole idea in summary is just to try to get people constantly into services. All right, thank you. Council President Honda. Thank you. Oh, and then, then Council Member Sepadas. I want to thank you for your work on this. I know you've spent a, a lot of time on this and thank you very, very, very much. I, I appreciate, appreciate that. Appreciate Council Member Sepadas. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Judge, for, for doing this and for educating us on this. It's um, um, a peer support aspect of it because I think people who've been through it and who are peer are 
better equipped with the lived experience to support um, people who are going through this. So I think it's, it's, it's really great. And I also want to say thank you for um, your willingness to come and present at the RSJC coming up next week. Um, because I think other cities uh, and other uh, court system, I mean, uh, municipalities and municipal courts are probably interested in engaging in this. And so thank you for paving the way for your leadership in this. And um, it will be, I hope others also follow suit. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It, it's important because uh, it's, uh, it's about public trust too. Getting, uh, if we don't have a plan, if we have this fragmented, disjointed, haphazard system, is it any wonder we fail? So the whole idea is to make the system actually have a, actually have some strategy to how we do things in a, as in unison, instead of you know all the cylinders uh, not firing together. Okay, uh, Councilperson Hunter, do you have a motion? Yes, I do. I move to accept the grant funds from AOC and authorize the court to execute any contract related to acceptance. Second. Put a motion. The second is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Matter passes unanimously. All right. Very much Thank appreciated. You. Thank you. Thank you. If you didn't hear me, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're just <laughs> just the beginning. I got only got four years to get it done. So this is. Right. Right, take it easy. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Okay, uh, then we've got this uh, next item. Uh, there was a motion at the beginning of the agenda. Could you read back what that motion was? Discussion on directing staff to prepare a zoning ordinance. I'm sorry, Stephanie, could you say that a little bit slower? Sorry. <laughs> Discussion on directing staff to prepare a zoning ordinance allowing for marijuana stores in the city. Okay. Um, the maker of the motion. Yeah, Mr. Moore? Mr. Mayor, I'll actually withdraw that motion. Oh, all right. And do we need to have the person who seconded that motion withdraw their second, Councilor? We can't withdraw it. It's already been taken action on, but we can just take no action on the item and move on. Okay. But All right. Uh, that, that, that we can do. All right. Thank you. Item 8, uh, first reading. This is item, uh, item A under 8A, Council Bill 815, 2021-2022 uh, mid-biennial budget adjustment. This is what we did before. Uh, we already had the staff presentation. Actually, we've had it several times now. Uh, do we have any public comment? Uh, and uh, uh, Steve Groom is here if you have any uh, questions. Council, any questions uh, uh, before I turn this over to public comment? Any questions of Director Groom? Okay. Any public comment, Stephanie? No, we don't have anyone signed up. Okay. Um, council discussion? Any comments? Okay. Would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 815-2021-2022 Mid-Biennial Budget Adjustment, an ordinance of the City of Federway, Washington relating to amending the 2021-2022 Biennial Budget. All right. Uh, Council Member Tran, do you have a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the December 7, 2021 Council meeting for second reading and enactment. Second. Second. Been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passes unanimously. Thank you, Steve. All right, item B, Council Bill uh, 816, the 2022 property tax levy, uh, fixing the property tax in the amount for the year 2022. Um, Director Groom, do you have a report? I do. Thank you, Mayor. I have, uh, Council members, I have got seven slides. One of them is interesting. This is about, <laughs> but this is about taxation. This is, this is property tax. This is the people's money and we do this once a year. We are not in a budget process this year, but every year we do uh, request the county how much uh, we, we, we communicate to the county how much we are requesting for a tax levy. So we do take this seriously. Uh, what, I, what I have here, if I can get uh, my slides to advance. Um, this is a fairly, uh, Highly, it's a highly regimented process. Uh, it's, it's highly regulated by state statute and by the uh, uh, processes of the county. Uh, we do request a levy from the county, but 
as you probably know, the state of Washington uh, caps the amount of tax a a property tax that can be levied on existing property values. This city doesn't have a lot of growth, so that means that a large degree of our uh, valuation is capped. Now, the county supplies all the data, so we don't have hardly any discretion at all. The uh, county assessor uh, ha uh, takes care of the uh, assessed values. They also do the tax collection, and they remit it to us. So what they ask of us is that to fill out their forms using their formulas. And, it, and w we have two opportunities to do poorly. There's not very much of an upside. One way that we can uh, uh, lose is we can, we can actually request less than we're allowed to, and then the second way that we can lose, if you will, is they will only remit what they actually collect. So it doesn't matter how much we ask for, they're only gonna remit to the extent that, uh, that, that they collect. So what I've done is I have, uh, in, in your packet, I've kind of noted uh, where I've gotten my numbers from on their form that, that we communicate to them, why we also just refer to the, the valuation form that they, that they send us. Um, so, in your packet here, you've got labels A and B, and we transfer the number over to them. Now, there's in the lower right, hand, lower left-hand corner there, you've got a couple numbers, 110,000. Those actually appear in the ordinance, and so you might be reading the ordinance and wondering, well, where did I get those numbers? Well, I got it from their 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 uh, assessed valuation form. So. This is the slide that I think is interesting. Every citizen is probably interested in this. The top bar shows the aggregate value of all the property in the city. And I've shown in the last three years, the value uh, has increased 6%, 6%, and 13%. The bottom graph is what our uh, property tax revenue here to the city, this is what funds our budget. It's gone up 1%, 2%, and 3%. That's largely due to the tax cap. Now, when we, when we look at sales tax, we consider that a real economic indicator. When businesses thrive, our sales tax comes in and our budget does well. Well, when we do a good job of taking care of our streets, our public safety, and this is a great city to live in, our property values goes up, but our revenue does not come uh, close to increasing in that same amount. Well, good for us for running a great city. What we've done is we've increased the personal wealth of the people that own property in the city. I know that that means that they feel like they're paying more taxes. However, that's their value. When they go to sell, it's their, uh, it's, it's their personal wealth. So this is an interesting slide. Good for you, good, governments, good governance of the city. We are gonna be asking for the, uh, the, the, the uh, greatest amount allowable because uh, guess what? Our, uh, the cost of our, uh, our salaries, the cost of living, our benefits, the cost of insurance, those all go up with the you know, consumer price index for, for for example, our property tax does not keep pace. So having said all that, um, in your packet, you've got a, uh, an, an ordinance that, that, that we'll be requesting of the county that they uh, uh, remit to us the, the greatest amount that is possible to us. Uh, it's completely formula driven. The assessed value is not determined by us. We also don't determine the tax rate. The tax rate is just a, a matter of dividing the, the value by the, uh, by the levy. Um, so that is as interesting as I can make it, but it's important, and staff recommends that you, I believe, uh, this, is, this is the first hearing, so the uh, ordinance won't be till the next meeting. I'm here for any questions, that, uh, and thank you for your time. Councilmember Coach Martin, your microphone is on. Did you have a question? All right. Council, uh, any other questions? All right. Uh, do we have any public comment uh, for this, Stephanie? Nobody signed up, no. Okay. Uh, Council discussion? All right, would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 816, 2022 Property Tax Levy, an ordinance of the City of Federal Way, Washington relating to fixing the property tax amount for the year of 2022. All right, Councilor Tran, do you have a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the December 7, 2021 Council meeting for second reading and enactment. Second. second. Been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passes unanimously. Item C, uh, Council Bill 817, the T Mobile Wireless Franchise Agreement Amendment. Staff report from Cole Elliott. Hi, Cole. Um, uh, with Public Works. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. 
there we go. Is that a presentation? And you're good to go. Just close it out when you get to the questions. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, Council President Honda, members of the Council. I come before you tonight with the T-Mobile Wireless Franchise Amendment. The policy question that we're asking is should the Council approve entering into a franchise amendment for the T-Mobile Wireless for one of their macro facilities? T-Mobile Wireless, as part of background, was approved for a franchise in November of 2015 to install wireless facilities. It has requested to amend this agreement be through for a facility that they've obtained through mergers and acquisitions. The work is guaranteed through a performance bond and the maintenance bonds, and the insurance is consistent with the city standards. A little bit more. Uh, excuse me. Uh, wireless demand has seen an exponential rise within the last few years, and to be competitive, the cities must keep up with the technology. The demand will be met through the implementation of a 5G network. T-Mobile relies 5G on their macro tower system um, with just putting new technology into the existing towers. And we're just showing a little graphic of the difference between a macro tower and the small cells that everybody hears about. Uh, here's one of the macro towers. Everybody's used to them. The financial impacts, uh, $2 million deposit for the franchise, uh, sorry, $2,000 deposit for the franchise amendment was made. The existing franchise will expire in November of 2025. We asked them if they wanted to just renegotiate and they just wanted to include this in. Uh, the right of way permits will still be required for any installation and work. The options to consider are approval of the proposed franchise amendment or do not approve of it and provide staff with some direction. The mayor's recommendation is to forward on to, to the first reading tonight LUTC concurred on November 16th. Any questions? Council, any questions? All right. Uh, thank you, Cole. Uh, good job. Um, all right. Uh, and now, uh, do we have any public comment? No, Mayor. I don't have anyone signed up. All right. And council discussion? All right. Would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 817, T-Mobile Wireless Franchise Agreement Amendment. An ordinance of the City of Federal Washington amending T-Mobile West Corporation's non-exclusive franchise to occupy rights of way in the City of Federal Way, Washington by adding a new site to the list of authorized sites. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Bruso, do you have a motion? Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. I move to forward proposed ordinance to December 7th, 2021. Council me for a second reenactment. Second. It's been a motion. A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? matter passes unanimously all right on to second reading and enactment item d council bill 813 ordinance adopting the 2021 king county surface water design manual the kcswdm um, would the city clerk please read the ordinance title council bill 813 ordinance adopting 2021 king county surface water design manual kcswdm an ordinance of the city of federal washington relating to national pollutant discharge element elimination system phase two permit requirements amending federal revised code 1620-010 and 1625-010 all right councilor Russo, do you have a motion yes you do miss mayor i move approval to propose ordinance second. Second. second all right there's been a motion a second is there any discussion all those in favor aye aye Opposed? Matter passes unanimously. All right, council reports. Council Member Coachmar. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, really, uh, nothing to report other than um, Thanksgiving is next week. And, you know, we have so many people in our community. I was surprised in our schools that some of our children that don't speak English real well don't even know about our holidays. Um, we have a lot of people in need in our community. Uh, if you know somebody, invite them to your home for Thanksgiving dinner. If you don't want to do that, buy some extra product, uh, some extra cans, uh, turkey. Take it over to the Malta Service Center uh, off of 336 and about 
10th South. Uh, just drive around behind the building, and there will be people there to pick that up and, and take it in. Buy a sack of potatoes when you're at Costco. Buy something extra and go around behind the multi-service center and take that in. And it's amazing um, how many people are in need in our community. And that's all, Mayor. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Councilmember Moore. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, we do have a lot of amazing uh, organizations here in Federal Way, Communities and Schools, the Multi-Service Center, um, Fusion, and many others that I've not mentioned. And, and so it is a good time to reach out to them and, and see what we can do to uh, support them. Also, um, yeah, this is an opportunity for us to, to also find ways to support the uh, Afghan community that's here, refugees uh, that are here in Federal Way. Um, this is new to them as well, so um, uh, there's, there's a, I'm sure we can put on the City Council Facebook page of where we can reach out if you want to support them. Um, let's see. Um, I think, and I'll save some of these comments for um, my last meeting next month, but um, I think it's really important that the incoming council does whatever they can to listen to the entire community. I really think it's important. It's not just it's not just the it's not just the 50 or 60 people that are here, or even less than that. Um, and voices matter. Voices are important. The voices that are here, it's important to hear. The voices that are not here and are home, it's important to hear them as well. And so. So, um, so I, I urge the incoming council to, to work on a diverse set of issues, not the issues that are most comfortable to them, but to think outside the box, talk about issues that are maybe not uh, popular, talk about it, because that's the role of government. Um, you know, the eight years that I've been here, um, we've had to take hard decisions, and we've had to talk about hard issues. Uh, and it's so important that we are a government of the people and for the people and for the entire. It's okay, I'll do what I do with my second graders. I'll just wait. So, um, like I said, I think listening to everybody I think is really, really important. Um, because we want to make sure that everybody's voices is heard and they're walking away empowered, feeling like their representative heard them. And I think in that honor, Mr. Mayor, that is why I made that motion earlier. Uh, because I think it's important to hear all voices. I think it is. Even if it's unpopular, I think it's really, I think it's really important. Um, and so I just want to thank uh, my colleagues that uh, were willing to have that discussion. But I also want to respect these voices that are here um, and saying, okay, um, we'll um, we'll put this to the side. Uh, but I think it's, like I said, I, I think when it comes to, well, I'll, I'll stop there. Um, I think the rest of my comments, uh, I'll just leave it to my closing comments at the next council meeting. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Mark Kraft. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, first of all, for everyone who's continuously been involved in local politics, been, been, willing to listen to me. I hope that even if we had, did not agree on a lot of issues, I hope that you feel like when you spoke to me that I respected you because I do respect you, even though, even if we disagree. I just wanna say thank you to the staff for the city for welcoming me during a time that was so difficult because we weren't even able to see each other in person. Uh, I just wanted to sort of reiterate something that Council Member Moore said is as council members, we don't just represent the voters. We represent all of the residents of Federal Way, and that includes the people who didn't and can't vote. Um, and regardless of how people vote and if we have differing opinions, I hope that more people get involved and that people vote uh, and get involved in local politics because local politics really does impact you much more than national politics, much more than statewide politics. And that's something that I 
personally didn't and I wasn't aware of three years ago really how much local politics uh, impact. So there are going to be some big decisions that the council is going to make in the future, including, you know, how development is going to be in downtown. And I just hope that everyone here and listening and in the community hears the council members out because um, I I'm sure that they will try to listen and hear you out as well. Uh, I like council member coach Mar said it's going to be Thanksgiving season next week so I just want to <laughs> remind people that not only are places taking donations for food but uh, there are a lot of clothing donations that are happening around our city and um, you know our county and our state and that's really important because it, it I'm not sure if you all are feeling it like I am but it's very cold lately and it's windy and it's rainy um, and and people need clothes so if you have extra coats if you have extra socks that those are some items that are really in need right now uh, but other than that it's been a pleasure and i hope to see people around the community please feel free to say hi to me um i i am a friendly person and willing to talk even when we disagree so thank you that's my friend Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do have a one uh, public service announcement, and that is your local DSHS office that located um, on 348 now is open uh, for in-person service. So you can share that with your neighbors. Um, the second thing is, uh, once again, I just wanted to say thank you to Council Member Baruso and Kraft for your willingness to serve on this council and serve the people of Fairtrayway. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, it has been fun uh, working with you all along, so I'm going to miss both of you. Um, so I also want to take this opportunity to wish the mayor, council president Honda, the rest of the council, and the public a happy Thanksgiving. With that, I end my report. All right, thank, thank you. you. Council Member Russo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, Happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and like Councilmember Coachmar says, and everyone on this council, you know, if you if you find folks that don't have what you have, it would be really great to go out and to volunteer sometimes. And when we talk about volunteering, uh, to get involved in the city, there are different commissions. I'm going to plug this in there a little bit, but there are commissions that are still open, and please serve. Um, it, it gives you that it gives you the insight of where the city is where we need to go and where it's been really when you take a look at all the commissions there's different commissions there's 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 ones that you may not be interested in but sometimes you go in there and you find out this is my this is my deal you know so i i really suggest that that folks take the time to go to the city apply for a commission sit on the commission make the decisions like we saw, like, like Cynthia does on the human services, they do a lot of work. There's a lot of commissions that do a lot of work. You may not see that sometimes in the background, but that's what makes the city go. You know, the council is just one aspect of that. So, but I just want to thank everyone uh, for indulging me when I, when I got up here back in March of 2019, I think it was, or 2020. Yeah, you know, I said, you know, I was I was going to take this and, and not squander this opportunity, and I think I have not. I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, I do say to the new folks coming in, please serve with compassion and listen, because that's what it's all about up here, and to serve. Again, service is really rewarding. So I thank everyone. Thank you, staff, again, for everything. My colleagues, Mr. Mayor, um, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, and it, I, I, happy Thanksgiving, and, and I probably won't see anyone, but, but I'll see, you're seeing me around, but also please have a safe holiday. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Sepha Dawson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Council Member um, Coach Mark, Council President Honda, and I went, were at a conference last week, and I'm sure you're going to be uh, talking about it a little, so I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. However, there were some um, topics that were really interesting, and actually, and a lot of the issues are universal or nation uh, nationwide, because this conference was um, 
for legislators throughout the country. And um, so one of those was um, the wireless tower and actually council president made a comment that they're <laughs> using the same um, um, pictures. pictures. And so this is something that is being addressed and talked about nationally. So um, being a part of those conversations is really great. And there were other some very interesting topics. But um, right now, so you know, before I take too much time, I just wanted to go to what um, Council Member uh, Martin Moore uh, proposed to discuss the marijuana shops. And someone just made a comment that if you want to smoke, and I, none of us here smoke marijuana. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but I know I don't. So when I support something, I don't want people to make the assumption that it's something I want it for my own consumption because it's not. But one of the conversations there, there was a panel discussion about this and they discussed the benefits of marijuana, especially medical marijuana. And that's what Martin was proposing. And it would have been very beneficial to all of us to have that conversation. But, you know, considering that you um, people were um, felt very strongly about it is why um, he was forced to withdraw. But um, there, there's, there's the benefit is not just about the smoking. You know, they have the regulations that we know about. They're very, um, yeah, they're regulated. Um, um, and there's medical benefits. But one thing that we really were, um, talked about in the past was the revenue generating that it has to impact all our people that, you, that do need it or that do smoke, do go to neighboring cities to, to buy them because they need them. For some people, it's a necessity. For I, I personally believe people who do want to use marijuana for recreation and people who just abuse it, especially the young people, it's too expensive because of the taxation anyway, because they're gonna get it somewhere else. So when we, when we propose something like this, please, I would like the discussion about it. And so um, thank you, Martin, for bringing it up. Um, so it's, it's part of a conversation for us to have because there are some benefits <coughs> and we're denying people access to something that they can use. We are. But also, we're not getting the, the revenue that we would have kept in our city. And so that's where we're coming from. And I just wanted to clear that because, again, some of the comments that I heard, I don't think we deserve those comments. We can uh, disagree, but I don't think it's, um, when we disagree, I don't think it means, you know, we're all, we all live here. This is our city. This is our community. We want the best for our city. So disagreement doesn't necessarily mean I'm the enemy or that I, I don't want something good for my city because our intention is to bring something good to our city. And that's why we're here. Um, so that said, thank you, Greg. Thank you, I mean, Council Member Baruso and thank you, Council Member um, Kraft for your service. And um, I hope we continue with, uh, with these discussions. And to everyone here, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening to me. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Council President Honda. So uh, uh, Council Member Sefa Dawson was talking about a conference that we went to last week, the National Foundation of Women Legislators. And this is truly an amazing conference because, first of all, they offer every woman who comes a scholarship. So most of the trip was completely paid for by the organization and um, it's a conference where you're not a republican or a democrat you're a woman legislator you're not introduced as a republican or a democrat you're not it's not even ever mentioned we're all working together and that's what really is the most important thing for any legislator is to work together and to work well with others so uh, we had a very rushed session. It was the last conference I went to before COVID and the first conference I went back to. And um, one of the sessions that we had was on community policing. And we had a sheriff from Michigan and uh, some legislators from Michigan talking about their policies on community policing. But what was the most interesting thing about that was that the sheriff said that community policing 
and hiring social workers is not cheaper. It's actually more expensive. He believes in it. He believes in putting a, an officer and a social worker into a police car together, but it's not cheaper. And that anyone in the audience who thought it was cheaper needs to, to think about that because it, it's, a, it's a good thing, but it doesn't save your city money. It will cost more. So I think as we go through our budget for the next year, we, we really need to, um, to realize that. And I'd like to thank uh, Jerry Lynn Clark for all of her help in getting us there. Um, organizing travel right now is not an easy feat. Our first flight was canceled, and it took several weeks to get new flights to get down to Tennessee. So thank you very much, Jerry Lynn. A few weeks ago, we had a police officer that shot uh, in Puyallup as he was on his morning jog. And um, thank goodness that Officer Hevner is home and recovering. I have a son who's a police officer, and I can't imagine getting that phone call. And um, I'm just extremely grateful that uh, he was able to be saved. He had a very, very serious injury, and that he's home and re recovering. And my prayers continue to be for him and his family. I hope that the, the people that shot him are caught, apprehended, and prosecuted and don't do this to anyone else. Um, I would also just like to take this time to thank council members Baruso, who I've known for a very long time because we worked together on the Diversity Commission, and council member Kraft, who I first met at Panera. <laughs> and uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for stepping up and volunteering to, to run and uh, for the appointments and then for office. Uh, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And um, thank you. Okay. With that, have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.